ready to start painting, I've taped down my 300 gram or 140 pound paper to the board. I'm using a slightly textured one for this painting. I've rubbed out, I've erased the pencil marks pretty much around the outside frame. I've just left the registration marks here to remind me roughly where I'm going. Now you probably can't see a great deal at the moment because it's all so pale but I'm going to start off by dropping some sky in. Remember you want two clean jars of water. One for washing your brush in and one for um, mixing, mixing your colours so you don't, don't get too muddy, that's the thing. Move that a bit nearer. So I'm going to start off as usual very, very light. Just wetting the surface of the paper there within that area. And I'm going to drop a bit of good old cerulean blue in. A bit more than that so we can see it. just let it find its way and just help it along a bit. As I recall, and looking at the photo, it wasn't particularly a very bright day, so we'll just put a bit in just to give us an idea and to tell us where the sky is. It's drying off quite a bit, so we'll just a bit more water and persuade it to come down a little bit. Starting off, as always, very light. OK, that's that first layer. Now I'm looking at the distant trees here. Now look, you can see some of them, they've got the sunshine um, catching them, which is rather interesting. So I'm going to drop just a bit of a pale, a very pale green leaving a little dry line between the hills and the sky. Oh, that's very bright. I'm probably going to tone that down, but it's just, as I say, the lightest, lightest layers, lightest in colour, just to get us started. I'm leaving, not going right up to the pencil line because I really want to rub those out if I can when the painting is dry. Let's have a little in there and then with that pale green that I've got I'm just going to put a bit of darker. I don't want to get too, too bright because this is a long way away and I want the colours to get stronger as they come towards us. So we will have a little bit of absorbent paper just to add a bit of texture because we're going to be layering on top of that. And then I've got another layer of trees so I want to just add a little bit of a blue just to ring the changes. I haven't bothered to wet that bit of paper there because I'm just literally getting some colour on the paper. It doesn't matter if I don't cover it all because if you look here we've actually got breaks where we've got fields and a bit of um, scrubland and that sort of thing. Not worried about getting it absolutely right at this stage. I mean everything in the right place as it were just getting a bit of a tint on. We call it blocking in. Um, that's usually the term used with oil painting and 
acrylics you block in the, the area first and then you build on top now I've added a little building there are a couple of buildings but I've added a building there and a few trees and a couple of cypress but now we're getting on to vineyard territory so I'm just going to have a very pale sort of mm, not pale enough browny beigey colour just to mark off that section and then doesn't matter if the colours run at this stage because I want this background to be a really loose watercolour area and it's the building that I want to do more detailed and this big area here so can you see how we're just starting to just block some colours in. I will of course give you the colour palette but we're just using nothing nothing very out of the ordinary. I'm sure you all have it in your your boxes. That's a bit too severe there. Let's soften that out. Bit up there. We've got trees there and then this is, I don't know what that bit is, that's going to be another sort of vineyard area I think. So let's just mix up another dubious beigey colour and just run that along there so you see ever so ever so light but it just helps us to get an idea of what we want then we've got a sort of a hedge um, so I will just put a murky bit of green in. A bit too dark, so let's just bring you across. This is really like a, a watercolour sketch, just giving you an idea. And I've, I've put in a couple of cypresses here because I want to break up the verticals. Now we've got back to our vineyards and oops it's a bit of a peculiar colour it's got a bit green I'm going to actually paint that in this way just because it will remind me not that I really need reminding but that this is in fact the vineyards which are coming towards us can't see them going, there was, a, there was going to be a really tiny bit there and I didn't think it was going to be worth it, it wasn't going to work, so I'm just going to have trees there. So you see what I mean about taking liberties with your photograph or even if you're out and doing it in real life, plein air. Okay, I'm not going to put the cypresses in at this stage because they will be very dark trees but I know they're there. That's going to be a stone wall. And this is some scrubby, scrubby. It was possibly a garden once upon a time, so I don't know how we're going to make that look interesting, but I'll think of something. Something like that. And again, just plonk in a bit of something. It doesn't all have to be the same colour. If you've got a scrap that wants cleaning out of your paint box and it's sort of the right colour, do that. Because things just aren't all the same in reality. All right, just painting to that line that was there. That's super. Okay, that's coming on rather well. Um, I'm not going to touch the building at the moment. Let's just put a bit of a bit of tree in, just so I know. Because what I'll probably do is do that last. Well, pretty much. So um, 
We want to keep coming backwards and forwards to our work to get the colour values right. But I will certainly leave that till the end. Right, that has got us started. So I hope you understand what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just getting the first layer in, the first wash, just to mark up the area so I've got a rough idea of what I'm doing. And that will be more greenery there. Let's have a little bit more colour on it. So what I'll do now is I'll wait until that is bone dry and then I will rub out the pencil marks because now I know where everything is because I've placed it like that. So we want the colours to be going paler as we go further back, although we, it would be nice to have the sun catching on there. So I think I'm going to put a big arrow saying, can you see that light? Just to remind me. <laughs> Okay, so that's our first painting in session and I'll see you in the next lecture.